Hey everyone, the name is Eric Doran. Today's video is called How to Use the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator to Find Your Ideal or Dream Job. So how do you use the 16 personality types system to figure out your career? What is the right career move for you? What kind of career should you go into? I believe that the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator can be used to find a better, more healthy working life, however you choose to use it. Remember that you don't actually have to change your job. You don't actually have to move to a different job unless you want to. Even if you find that your current job doesn't personally fit you perfectly, you might still enjoy staying in this workplace. And you might find ways to enjoy your work more than what you currently do. You can already sit down and have a conversation with your boss or manager about how you like to work, what things or working strategies and how do you feel about meetings and how do you feel about what you do and your current tasks would you like to make any changes in your current job description are there some things you enjoy less about your job that other people could do are there some things you would enjoy doing more that other people are currently doing that you would like to take over and so what you can do is you can have a discussion with your workplace about what your passion is and what your interests are and what kind of things you would like to pursue because most jobs today, most employers today, most serious employers want to invest in you and in your success and in your happiness because they know if you are happy, if you have flow, if you are confident in your role, you're going to perform better. Now, the thing I see with the Myers-Briggs type indicator is it's often used incorrectly. A lot of recruiters out there use the MBTI to try to find the best type match for their current job description. So they think, okay, I need to find somebody who has experience with back-end development. Okay, then I obviously need an introvert. I need somebody, perhaps an INTJ or an INTP, because those would fit the job. Okay, there's creativity uh, in the description. There is... Uh, uh, task management is planning, structuring. Yeah, so I cannot consider an ESFJ or an ESFP for this role. So if an ESFP comes in and I've studied to become a programmer and I do it really well and uh, I've gone into this role and uh, this is uh, what I like to do, then a lot of time you will be rooted out of this position simply because you are not considered a fit for the role. Now, the MBTI is about your passions. It's not, about, it's not a measurement of your skill. It doesn't actually say anything about how talented you are. It doesn't say anything about what you studied or how you have performed in your current work or what you are doing. You might have really good credentials. You might have really good backup to confirm that I am good at this role. I worked hard in it and I do well in this position. Still, a lot of employers will say, no, we need a more extroverted candidate, or no, we need somebody who is a bit more traditional or more organized or disciplined. And here's the thing. What they're doing is they're looking past the fact that people can be different at work than what they are in their private life. Somebody who is more shy or reserved can learn to be extroverted or outgoing in their role. If necessary, you want a candidate who is open to do the tasks that you are looking for. You need a candidate that is passionate about what you are asking of them. You don't need a candidate that 100% fits the type you are considered yourself to look for. If you are a person thinking, okay, what kind of job should I go into? What should I do based on my MBTI type? What you'll find is there's lots of content out there. There's lots of job descriptions. There's lots of career advice. If you Google your personality type, you'll find a lot of information about ideal careers and what kind of things you could go into. Now, if you find that, no, I'm working somewhere else or I'm doing something different than this, or no, this is not really me, don't worry about it. Truth is, uh, any personality type can learn to thrive in almost any role. And the only thing you need to look at is how do I get my values met in this workplace or in this career? And what you can find is, yeah, ESFJs might enjoy certain tasks that are more technical in their nature because they feel that it can help them connect more with people because they see themselves as people creating something for the tribe. And so what you want to look at is, am I getting what I want from this role? 
am I able to work for something I care about? For example, if I agree with the politics of the organization or if I care a lot about the values represented by this company, I might still be interested in a job title that is half fit. So what that means is, yeah, I will still try out this job or take on this role that I'm a bit unsure of because I really like the workplace and I really uh, would like to work with this company. And then afterwards, if this role, it turns out to be a bad fit for you, you can always see in the company if there are other opportunities available and it's okay to move on. You know, the workplace is really flexible today. So try things out and don't be afraid to see how things go because yeah, I started out as a product specialist for a bike company and that might seem like a really bad fit for me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was. But I got to do a lot of writing for this position. I lot, got to learn a lot of copy, blogging, and the social media. And I, that was great for me. Then after what, that, I moved on to a job in cosmetics industry. And in once again, what do I know about cosmetics? <laughs> Nothing. How many people are men in this role? Uh, almost nobody. Still, I learned to really enjoy this position because I really enjoy the customer service aspect of it. And I enjoy the social media tasks in this position. There were things that were difficult about this role because, hey, I had to do a lot of phone calls. I had to be social and outgoing. And I had to have a kind of positivity. I had to have a kind of enthusiasm representing the brand that I didn't necessarily feel I had when I started out. But... What you also have to realize is, yeah, in the end, of course, you, you're you doing the position also because of uh, financial reasons. And you're doing it because you're looking for growth and you're looking to learn something new. You might uh, feel that, no, this can be a great start and it might lead somewhere great and it might take me the right way. And that's good enough. Sometimes that's just fine. That's where it is. And uh, so I would say, yeah. Don't pigeonhole yourself too much. And if you get a communications master degree and then you end up getting a job in customer service, don't feel so bad about that because, hey, everyone has to start somewhere, right? If you are a person who gets an engineering exam and then your first year, yeah, okay, you might have to do some of the grunt work. <laughs> you might have to work with the logistics or something, packing things in a warehouse, you know, that can happen and that's all fine. Uh, and that's just part of the process. Not everybody ends up doing what they studied for. And actually, very few people seem to be doing what they studied for. Uh, not even Steve Jobs fully studied for or prepared for what he was doing in Apple. And hey, he still turned out quite all right. So can you use the MBTI to create your dream career? Yeah, and this is what you should do. You should start writing down and exploring, okay, what sectors might I be interested in? What kind of job titles are out there? I should search on LinkedIn. What kind of adverts are up? What kind of positions are people looking for? What do they describe of these roles? How do I feel about these positions? You should send out your resume. You should uh, go to job interviews. Even if you're just curious or a little bit on the sidelines, you can always go to the job interview and learn more. You should ask questions about the workplace, about the culture, about the work methods, the systems they use. And so you can visualize and get a clear idea in your head. How does this feel? You should uh, look at other people applying for these jobs and you should ask them questions. How do you feel about this role? What do you do in your position? What is that like for you? Uh, consider taking up an internship or something there you can try it out for yourself. Yeah, you have lots of opportunities. So your personality type can help you navigate that and say, yeah, okay, this role is a bit more outgoing than what I am, or okay, this role is a bit more, this workplace is a bit more conservative than what I like. This uh, position seems very new and original and seems to give me a lot of creative freedom, which I really like, or this uh, position seems to come in a very competitive atmosphere with a lot of competition and a lot of elements of bonuses and uh, upselling and so on. And I don't really feel comfortable with that. So maybe I should go for a more service oriented role. You know, you should look at all those things and think, okay, this uh, job environment, it seems too chaotic for me. So I couldn't focus or find the planning I like. And yeah, you can make all these judgments. You can use the MTI as a tool to help you with that. That's it for today. And if this video helped you, let me know in the comments down below and tell me what job do you like? What kind of career do you like? And what personal type are you? 
often, I think uh, if you scroll down to the comments, you'll find their answers are quite surprising. A lot of personal types are working in companies that are weird or different than what their personality type might suggest. That's just how complex the MySpace is.